습니다. 예, 네, 북에서 아, 왔습니다. 아, 예. <웃음> 제가 또 북에 있을 때 한번 좀이 현중화 감독님을 꼭 만나보고 싶었는데 아, 아, 지금 어떻게 지내세요? 어, 저는 이제 아기 때 지도자. 아. 선수들을 가르치는 지도자 하고 있습니다. 아, 그래요? 여기가 지금 저희 선수들이에요. 어. 아, 너네들 인사 좀 드려. 드려. 아, 이거 남과 북이나 똑같네. 이거 파크 선수들은 다 예쁘게 생겼어. 예? <웃음> 아, 그, 그때 그, 저, 현중화 감독님하고 북의 그, 네. 어, 리브니 선수하고 그때 그 유일팀을 만들어가지고 네. 역상 처음으로 중국팀을 그때 이기지 않았어요? 그렇죠. 예. 음, 아주 오래됐고, 음. 저도, 어, 선수 생활, 아니, 뭐, 지도생활 통틀어서 아주 기억에 남는 그 음. 레이즈가 하나였어요. 네. 네. 제 생각에는 그때, 네, 어, 이후로는 한 번도 고는 나라 팀도 중국 팀을 이겨본 적이 있는 것 같지 않아요? 네. 네. 근데 사실 그때 저희가 이길 때도요. 네. 어, 기적에 가깝다고 했었어요. 아. 저제 생각에도 어, 이길 거다라고는 생각을 못했어요. 야, 그래요? 네. 그때 그 북한도 TV로 그걸 다 방영했는데 그때 이미지가 아, 그때 준 그런 충격이 상당히 강렬했어요. 어, 북한함이 저렇게 유일 팀을 만드니 그렇게 강적 중국도 금방 허문에 그게 제가 말씀드리고 싶은 네. 부분 그게 네. 무서울 게 없다 아. 아닌가 보다 지금 제가 지금 이제 어떤 학생들한테 얘기할 때도 뭐라 했냐면요 음. 그때가 어, 일본 땅에서 네. 일본이었죠 일본 그렇죠 남과 북이 합쳐져서 어. 중국을 이겼다 네. 이거는 되게 역사적인 아. 그건 정말 우리가 영원히 가슴에 안고 성을 낸 날까지 가야 할 중요한 메시지라고 맞습니다. 생각합니다. 맞습니다. 네. 네. 저도 그렇게 생각합니다. 아, 이거 제가 그 북에 있을 때 한번 이제 그 현정아 감독님하고 좀 한번 제가 잘 하진 못하지만 그래도 한번 좀 타크라도 좀 <웃음> 같이 쳐보고 근데 좀 한번 오늘 시간 좀 내주시면 감사하겠습니다. 아, 여기까지 오셨는데 타크 한번 치셨다. 아, 정말, 정말 영광입니다. 예. 예. 한번 더. 예. 마켓을. 음. 뒤에다가 예 크게 좀 하나 예 날짜도 네. 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 You just came back from playing table tennis with a former South Korean athlete, Hyun Jung Hwa. How did that happen? What was that like? Oh, uh, to be honest, it was my uh, long dream to uh, meet her, her in my life. Because, really? Yes, because you know, uh, Hyun Jung Hwa was the first you know South Korean athlete. Uh, uh, who played together with a North Korean athlete in ping pong and uh, that match was broadcasted by North Korean the official TV, you know. So people in North Korea actually know Hyun Jung Hwa? Oh yes, uh, but uh, now how time flies, it's quite, uh, I think it was more than uh, 20 years ago. Yes, mm -hmm. it was so, back in 91, 92. Oh, so yes, yes, that's right. Uh, yes, uh, I think sports uh, is the only place where North and South Koreans uh, 
are communicating freely mm -hmm. and sometimes you know in a very more uh, friendly way and sometimes you know North and South Korean athletes you know the the contest each other you know uh, on the scene but as soon as the the match is finished they always come together and then shake hands you know embrace each other they really share or of the feeling of same nation and the same blood mm -hmm. and that is the actual scene which i wanted very much in diplomatic you know right. the arena for instance uh, in un you know the meetings or international meetings sometimes north and uh, south korean diplomats you know uh, are debating or quarreling or sometimes you know criticizing it. so uh, the mood was very hostile and intense you know official in official scenes but like olympic games when the meeting is finished you know then i would prefer that north and south diplomats come and shake hands you know chat each other but so far uh, both north and south korean diplomats are very cold each other you know they don't have they, they, they do not share, you know, these kind of feelings of mm -hmm. compatriots, you know, but uh, I, that's why after uh, I defected to South Korea, uh, whenever I meet South Korean diplomats, you know, I always tell them that if you meet uh, North Korean diplomats uh, in unofficial, you know, the area, please, you know, try to approach them and then uh, greet them with the feeling of same nation and then so many north koreans are in the know about how developed south korea is yes and they're diplomats like yourself who get to really experience the western world but at the same time you know get to see what how south korean diplomats are living are working and under what condition um is there a higher sentiment of the urge for unification amongst those group of people than the average North Koreans, would you say? So far, uh, the people in North Korea have seen the reality of South Korea, the level of the South Korea's economic development through uh, the cultural contents made in South Korea. But up to now, all these, you know, the awareness came from just curiosity you know and uh, they did not uh, put a kind of you know uh, critical analysis of a North Korean system and North Korean society that's why I'm always advocating that we should uh, diversify you know uh, the contents of dramas or films or I think we should uh, make a kind of, you know, tailor-made the content uh, for just uh, North Koreans mm. uh, in order to educate or bring back, you know, the basic sense of right of human beings uh, to North Korea. So that, you know, that is the way to uh, educate and enlighten the North Korean people because they have been brainwashed for 60 years mm -hmm. and it now is the time uh, to do a kind of you know the tailor-made contents to educate North Korean people. In your view what would you say is the most feasible way of reunification the Korean Peninsula? Uh, if we look back the history of the uh, the communist movement in Europe you know all of those you know the socialist system in Eastern Europe collapsed the, by the people's, you know, uprising or resistance. For instance, in East Germany, you know, mm -hmm. one day, you know, people just came into the streets, they climbed the Berlin Wall and thousands of people, you know, uh, escaped from East Germany to Hungary. Mm -hmm. So there was all of a sudden a huge uh, the happenings of uh, refugees, you know, defections of whatever, which brought the whole system down one day. So I could imagine and also this, that kind of case which happened in other 
you know, former communist countries could also happen in North Korea because, you know, now most of North Korean people strongly believe that there is no future, you see, on North Korean system. So I would imagine that there are others, other North Korean elites who think and who acknowledge the fact that there is no future in the regime, like yourself. Um, is there a possibility of a coup amongst the leadership class who would basically topple Kim Jong-un? They are in dilemma. For instance, uh, if they ask out, you know, uh, the Kim Jong-un from, you know, the top leadership, then what could be the result of this kind of, you know, uh, the toppling Kim Jong-un regime? If this kind of, you know, the contingency happens, the North Korean elite group uh, is afraid of political revenge by the normal North Korean people. As I have said, the North Korea is a society, you see, uh, with a strict, you know, class system. And majority of North Korean people so far were looked down upon and they were uh, outside of those government originated, you know, privileges of all these things. So uh, they are, the present elite group is very afraid of this kind of, you know, upside down of mm -hmm. this, the class system. And on the meanwhile, also the Chinese factor as well, because uh, if the present North Korean a system crumbles all of a sudden without any preparations, then there is high uh, probability that Chinese uh, would come again to benefit uh, from this kind of chaos in North Korea. So I think the most important thing uh, for us and for South Korea is to uh, let the elite group in North Korea know that the reunification by South Korea uh, would also give them a kind of equal opportunity and benefit to uh, the, the elite group. There would be no any, you know, the political revenge and those elite group could enjoy the uh, same opportunity or, you know, or the chances they enjoyed in their uh, previous systems so that we should win uh, the favor of the present North Korean elite. I was, um, you know, I was talking to you outside of um, our set that I have a bit of a difficulty understanding your Korean. So over seven decades of separation, its language is just one factor that seems to have, I suppose, you know, gone apart, I guess, evolved between the two, between the two parts. What are some of the things that you found as key differences? Uh, when I uh, speak, uh, South Koreans can easily detect that I'm from uh, North Korea because there are some differences in our uh, daily uh, language. For instance, South Korea, uh, they, you use no thanks like uh, but in North Korea, we say, and mm. it's very difficult for me to change this kind of the most simple thing because I am so much used to say, not, but whenever, I always remember this, but whenever I say, then all of a sudden, you see, they start to stare at me, what is he saying? Since you came to South Korea, do you feel that the South Korean society is ready for unif reunification? South Korea is not uh, fully, you know, prepared for a sudden or uh, possible uh, reunification. Many people uh, are talking about the gain or loss. The cost you know? of unification. That's right. And many of them are really afraid, you know, of massive, you know, refugees, you know, millions of refugees may would come down to south and it would create a kind of social 
uh, the problem in South Korean you know, the society and even some of them say that North Korea's infrastructures are uh, so much less developed and it would uh, need a huge you know the investment or whatever which could bring a very negative impact on South Korea uh, which should prepare a kind of you know fourth industrial revolution you know so these are the issues are really debated in South Korean society but I don't think the issue of reunification it's something, you know, like gain or loss, you know. What I want to say to South Korean public is that uh, a kind of, you know, the nuclear disaster uh, is approaching to, uh, towards a South Korean population. In order to get rid of that kind of possible nuclear catastrophe, the only way to avoid it is to reunify, you know, the country. And so the reunification issue is the issue of uh, life or death, you know, to South Korean people, not, you know, a kind of, you know, gain or loss issues. So from someone from North Korea and the North Korean um, elite group, what would you say to this? There are some foreign experts especially who say that, you know what, reunification, why do you guys obsess over reunification so much? You guys have been living separated for the last seven decades. Why don't you just carry on your lives separately? So we can just, you know, carry on our lives as South Korea, as North Korea, as recognized by the United Nations as two countries. Why don't you just do that? Why all the fuss about reunification? Hmm. I am really against you really? Know, on that kind of things. For instance, you know, the only way to uh, harmonize the society and uh, the economy is to merge the two system, two people and two economy as soon as possible. For instance, if we <clears throat> look back the lessons, you know, in Germany, when German, West German government prepared the reunification, there was a hot debate what kind of exchange rate they should apply between West German mark and East German mark because at that time the East German's economy cannot be the match of West Germany. But West German government decided to apply one-to-one -one exchange rate. And he, at that time, economists, businessmen were strongly against, you know, that means that they would invest, you know, billions of billions of mark to purchase those usually right. East Germany mark, you see. But what the businessmen didn't see that this kind of, you know, quick and sudden emerge of two economic system could bring more benefit to German economy. So what happened in Germany now? Even though they invested billions of marks just to get rid of those East German mark, now the whole Germany, you know, the economy of whole Germany prospered. So we should learn from this lesson. If Korea is reunified and South Korea is connected with the China, through road system or railway system. I think the road from Seoul to Sinuju and Tandong, the border city, would be filled of, you know, tens of thousands of Chinese or South Korean cars or trucks or whatever. You know, the present trade volume between uh, China and South Korea, you know, overpass uh, uh, I think 100 billion US dollars. So please imagine if we carry all these, you know, the export or import items, you know, by truck or train, you know, to China, you know, we, how much, you know, economic benefit, you know, we can get, you know. So the only, you know, way, you see, for quick harmonization of these two careers is to quick merge of society, people, you know, and the economy. And I think the, the future reunification 
can be a second leap forward for South Korean economy. So imagine that the 51 million people of South Korea need to basically in the beginning feed the 24 million people of North Korea with a huge wealth difference, right? In the longer term, it may be perhaps that your argument is true, but in the shorter term, so in the next few years after reunification, it would be a burden for South Korea and thus it would basically slump down the Korean economy as a whole, no? I have, you know, the di different opinion and approach, you know, if we uh, look deeply into the present economic structure of South Korea, many part of uh, South Korean economy still rely on the original traditional economic, you know, the structure like, you know, the shipbuilding, construction, or uh, manufacturing. Steel manufacturing these things. So what would we do of these, you know, a big and huge manufacturing population, you know, and for instance, in the past, you know, South Korean workers, you know, went to the yeah, Middle East countries to earn, you know, the hard currency for South Korean economy. But now, is there anybody in South Korea who want to go to desert to build something? I don't know. People, because of the, you know, the uh, raising of living standard of South Korea, you know, those people in that area would not take that kind of job. But if the country is reunified, we need huge, you know, the projects of building infrastructures in North Korea, for instance, the road should be rebuilt, railways, you know, should be, you know, the rebuilt again, those, you know, the traditional, uh, the, uh, the economy of South Korea, uh, especially in manufacturing industry, can actually, you know, uh, have a great job market because of this uh, reunification and I think it would give a kind of very strong impetus to South Korean economy for at least uh, uh, 10 or 20 years. So basically you're a strong advocate of Korean reunification um, on a more national level. On a more personal level, why do you feel so strongly about reunifying the two Koreas? All my relatives, you know, my brothers and sisters, they are all in North Korea and it is my uh, dream uh, to walk to my hometown in my life and I am uh, strongly believing that, you know, the only way uh, to speed up, you know, my dream of going back to my hometown is to eliminate, you know, Kim Jong-un, you know, regime uh, from North Korea. I think that is the only realistic way to solve all the problems like nuclear issues or reunification issues, even, you know, my family private issues. Or even that more North Koreans like yourself who want to actually play table tennis with Hyun jung hwa could actually have the opportunity to come to South Korea and play table tennis with her. Oh, yes, of course, you know. Right. So um, we all dream of a reunified Korea as Korean people. But what is your envision or what is your vision of a one Korea? I uh, definitely believe in, you know, the Korea's reunification. And I also believe that the reunification uh, could come much earlier than the we expected. Uh, because, you know, I can see the change of the mind of North Korean people. The past 10 and 20 years, you know, uh, brought a very big change in the minds of North Korea by watching South Korean cultural contents, mm -hmm. films and dramas. And that helped North Korea to fundamentally change their concepts on South Korea. So there is no point for North Korean popular masses to, you know, be afraid of South Korea or to hate, you know, the South Korea. So the level of this kind of, you know, hostility and hatred dropped dramatically thanks to the introduction of 
South Korean films to North Korea. So I think, as the time being, this kind of favorable feeling by North Korean would increase. So if any conflicts, military, you see, the conflicts or you know, possible you know, war happens, I think uh, most of North Korean people would not you know, the react like what happened in our first war. So far, we have been very lucky. And hopefully we'll be luckier in the future with this rise of soft power that we'll see a one Korea, reunified Korea in our lifetimes. Absolutely. And I want to see that they, my personal, you know, the ambition to see that they within five years, and if not five years, definitely in 10 years. All right. Well, thank you again so much for your insights and your valuable thoughts today. Thank you. The former North Korean diplomat is now determined to devote the rest of his life to reunifying the two Koreas to bring the freedom that he and his family get to enjoy in South Korea to his loved ones in the North. But that's not just for Tae, because to quote a former South Korean diplomat to the United Nations, to all South Koreans, North Koreans aren't just anybody's. Millions of us still have family and relatives in the North. And it's heartbreaking to learn of the struggles and atrocities that our people go through on the other side of the border.